Two Kings from the South. Two Kings, baby. Uh, today we got a guest host, Mr. Gabe. How you doing, Mr. Gabe? Doing good, Mr. Derek. How you doing today, I'm sir? I'm doing pretty good. Can't complain. Today we're going to talk about the Mike Tyson fight. Uh, what did you think about the Mike Tyson fight? Well, to be honest, Derek, a fight is a pretty strong <laughs> word for what we watched last yeah, night. Yeah, uh, I yeah. Call, I call that a paycheck. Yeah. And I can't really b blame... Tyson for taking it, you know. Yeah. Why wouldn't you take another X million? I don't know. What, what was the payout? Well, it said Jake Paul got forty million and Mike Tyson got twenty million. So twenty million dollars, hey, you know. How many million dollars per round is that? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. What was it? Three rounds or four? It was. It was, it was eight, eight, eight rounds. Eight rounds. Eight, it yeah. was eight rounds. They changed it. Right. They made eight rounds. That's right. That's right. Uh, I'm gonna say this real quick. I try to tell everybody the same thing. Mike Tyson, fifty-eight years old. Jake Paul, 27 years old. You already knew that Mike Tyson, unless he just got lucky with a, you know, whatever kind of, whatever, you knew this man is too old. He just had a damn blood transfusion just a few months ago. People act like they're forgetting that, that this fight was rescheduled because he had to have eight damn blood transfusions a few months ago, Jake Paul fight or whatever. You know Jake Paul was supposed to win the fight. What you got to say about it, dog? You know, I think... We really just wanted to see what we wanted to see. Yeah. Because I was talking trash the whole time along with this. Yeah. Saying that uh, I wanted to see Tyson knock Paul out. But I think that's just kind of where we are. You know, Paul just likes to play the bad guy. He yeah. likes the attention. Yeah. And, uh, it's like got all the Instagram followers and shit. Yeah. And, you know, I've never cared for him or his brother you know, or any of his family or anything they've ever done. Uh, they pretty much... Uh, been insignificant to me. Yeah. So I yeah. don't really see them as fighters. I see them as um gimmick, gimmick horse for money. Yeah, yeah. The thing about it is the media can sit here and twist your your opinion on stuff like, okay, Mike Tyson has a chance. He's sparring. He did a damn sparring is not a damn fight. Yeah. A sparring partner it does not hit you back. All you do is swing at the air, you hit their mitts, they protect it. You gotta you gotta be able to take a blow. You got to be able to take the damage or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Well, not only the damage, but you could tell he was gassed. Yeah, he was gassed. By, by the half of the second round. It looked like he was gassed walking to the damn ring. I know Netflix was fucking up, you know, with all the glitching and all this other <laughs> shit and buffering. But Mike Tyson looked like he was gassed walking to the ring. By the time he made it to the ring, it looked like he... I said, damn. Already out of breath. Yeah, he was like, he was, what the hell? I mean, I'm not going to tell him that in person. He whooped my ass. Yeah, that's but, what I'm saying. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I just don't think he was... It was really the fight we were looking for. Now, hell however, no. I'm however, still looking for a fight. Hell, the Taylor Serrano fight. Yeah, now, hey, them girls. Did yeah. you watch? Yes, that I fight? watched it. Woo. I watched it. Listen, when she I know, got cut, though, you know. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, look, yeah. That was that was a fight for the ages. That was a good fight, right there. That would work the money. I think I think that's really what you know people paid all the money to see the celebrity fight of yeah. you know Paul versus Tyson. Even though Tyson's a real fighter and Paul just fights retired people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the old people or damn whatever. Retired NBA players. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or people that's way under his weight and whatever, but, you know. But, man, that's it. Uh, the Taylor Serrano fight, that was awesome. And, hey, yeah, uh, they, that was entertaining. That was that was high end. Yeah. I think I think it's going to bring a lot of fans to the, uh, to the sport. Well, you know, I'll tell you something. I, you know, I follow MMA and I follow boxing. And, you know, Serrano, Serrano's a good fighter, you know what I'm saying? But once you get to that point, you know, they pretty much were evenly matched. That's the thing about it. When you mm -hmm. fight somebody that's evenly matched, you're going to get this kind of fight. When you fight the motherfucker that you're 31 years younger than, Jake Paul, of course you're supposed to win the damn fight. Yeah. Well, I took it light on him. and Nah, well, you shouldn't be fighting his ass at all. When you fought a real boxer, when you fought uh, Tommy Fury, you see what happened to him. Tommy Fury, that's your, your only damn loss, Jake Paul, is a Tommy Fury. When you fought a real boxer, somebody that was the right age. Currently boxing. Yeah, Currently, yeah, yeah. yeah. Instead of fighting somebody who never retired or who whatever, I tell you what, we we gonna switch we gonna switch subject here. Uh, we not gonna talk about it too much. Yeah, but, I tried to give Jake Paul too much energy. Yeah, 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 you, yeah. Fucking, <laughs> uh, we gonna switch subject here. We gonna talk about the election, okay? Uh, Perfect, something safe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully, we gonna talk about the election. We know we got a new president, and I tell people this, you know, even though the person that you wanted to win didn't win, support the president that you got because he's still the fucking leader of our country. The country's been in such a, a downtrodden way and this and that, you know. So I tell people that you just got to support who's in office. I'm going to support whoever's in office, okay? So, you know, I think me and you talked about this before. We really wanted a third-party candidate 
into the election. You know, I wish it was another damn option than the two motherfuckers that was in it. I'm going to say this now. I wish it was somebody else that would have ran for president, you know, that we could have, you know, had an option other than the two people that we had. So, you know, we're going to leave it alone. We do talk about it. We don't know this and that. I mean, what you got to say about it, uh, okay? What you got to say, dog? You know, you know, dog, I just got to say, we've talked about this, especially, you know, yeah. off, off podcast. Yeah, yeah. About how, you know, there are great third-party candidates. Yeah, But yeah. currently, you know, the two-party system is what's really killing America. Yeah. And really restricting us from getting the better candidates. Yeah. You know, um, I think it was uh, Ice-T who uh, once tweeted out and said, uh, you know, you can leave that red wing versus right, uh, red wing versus blue wing yeah. uh, talk at home. And it's two wings of the same bird. And yeah. I feel the yeah. same way. Yeah. So, you know, when you have so many candidates trying to grab one spot for a Democratic or one spot for a Republican primary, and that's just it, you know, you, you do miss out on a lot of ideas for yeah. innovation, for our country, for our people. You just miss out on a lot. And, uh, you know, I think that's painfully apparent to the Democratic Party, yeah. who had great options and they run people off of their own party yeah people like tulsi gabbard yeah. uh you know who probably would be a two-term president by now yeah. uh you know finishing up her second term and we'd be getting our next president if if they were to let her you know get a chance but yeah you know, until until they want to loosen up the reins and let the american people start to pick people well i'm gonna tell you like this i ain't you know i ain't trying to interrupt you here no joe joe biden was there too damn long already he should have he should have been supplanted before he you know what i'm saying they should have been made this change from Oh, let's wait till the election come, and now we're gonna change the candidate to Kamala Harris. Oh, you should have changed this shit a year ago. Well, that's because you know what I'm saying. That's because at least a fucking year ago. The entire Democratic Party is trying to stay in charge. It's not yeah. about a candidate; it's about the the party staying in control. Yeah. You understand that by the narratives. Yeah, yeah. We we, we catch on to you know, like I said, the media will sit here and, and whoop the whoop. But I had told people this before. I said, man, the numbers. Uh, Trump. I I, th- I knew Trump was going. I tried to tell people. He he had two big he, all the battleground states. He already had them locked up. You know what I'm saying? And and even this year, he got fucking states that he normally fucking lose. He got states that he did not win before in his previous uh you know election whatever when he was the president. He got states that he didn't fucking win then. So that lets you know that things have changed. You know what I'm saying? People want to change. You know what I'm saying? They absolutely do. And look, that's not what you're talking about is absolutely true. But it's not just new voters. These are crossover voters. Yeah, I saw they've, it. They've proven, especially in Arizona, where people would vote for a Democratic senator uh, against the Republican who had endorsed Trump and was on the Trump train the whole time. Yeah. But, they voted, but a certain percentage of them had to vote for Trump for president and also a Democrat for senator. I'm going to tell you so, tells you, they want change. Yeah, and another thing i tell you this. Uh, I look at the demographic. The damn Latin, Latino men was, was supporting Trump. I'm looking like, what the fuck y'all come from? You know what I'm saying? Like, what the hell? They supported him, even though he made these comments. You know Trump, like, that's one thing about Trump. He just he gonna, said some he, stuff. Yeah, he's going to say whatever he feel like. So you got people that you would think that would not vote for him that did. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, we, we ain't going to talk about it. We threw with it. We're going to support the president. He's the president, so we're going to support him. And all right, we're going we gonna to switch I just, it up. Hey, you I, know? I, I, I don't agree with you, and I just want to close out and say I, I pray that this is better for our country. Yeah, I hope and, so, and, too. And we go in the right direction now. I hope so. Now, I was going to say this that I forgot to say, and people don't understand this. The president don't make the gas prices in the country. Amen. The, the policies that they implement, that will change your gas prices and your food prices. And affect it. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. So the president is not making your damn gas prices. His policies that he implement, and this got to go through the legislature and the House and all this other shit, that what affects your gas prices. So, like I said, we're hey, we, we going to leave that alone. We're going to talk about this John Jones fight. Um, John Jones, you know, he fought Steve Amen, uh last night, whatever. He he was he was the favorite. They say he's the GOAT. I, you know, he's the greatest fighter. I'm going to ask you about this now. He's the great. He's 27, 28, and 1 now, or whatever. And the only fight he lost because he did a legal elbow. You know he had these steroid scandals. You know he got cocaine. He hit a pregnant woman. He did this. He did that. Do you think that John Jones is the greatest fighter in the NBA, in, in NBA history? I just want your opinion. Ooh, that's a tough ask. Um, I think he's obviously and very clearly one of the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't say that I'm well-versed enough in John Jones' fights to say that I think he is the greatest. Yeah. But, I mean, I think he's making it tough to say no to. You know, I, I used to have an alternate opinion of... Uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Yeah, but at the same time, 
his record holds still. Yeah, he's 50, 50 and 0. He you know what I'm saying? 50 and 0. And he fought almost uh, he, all real fighters. He fought, you know, a he, couple gimmick fights, but other than that, it was all real stuff. He fought 13 former champions. People talk shit about Floyd Mayweather, Cherry Pick. He fought 13 fucking former champions and like 20 fucking people that were fucking undefeated when he fought. So, yeah, I mean. So, I, and, I, you I know. Mean, so, Jones, I mean, Jones clearly the proof's in the pudding. Yeah. I mean, clearly, yeah. you, you mentioned some of the scandals. I mean, if he's practicing that much at home, of yeah. course he's going to be the best fighter in history. Yeah, yeah. But see, it's just some steroids. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the steroid diminished what he could have accomplished on his own merit. You know so what I'm saying? I, if, and if if that is the case, I'm going to have to say that, like, yeah, there's always going to be an asterisk on his career. Yeah, but yeah, see. Like, I think there's an asterisk on the Barry Bonds ball. Look, I'm going to tell you something. I hate to, I will tell you this, what Nick Diaz said. Everybody does. E everybody taking yeah. some form of steroid. Some testosterone, whatever, to get the advantage in these fights. Well, you know Nate what I'm Diaz saying? is probably telling the truth because Nate Diaz does not give a fuck. Damn sure don't give a fuck. The damn sure don't care at all. No, he will he, tell he, you whatever. He, whatever he want to say, hey. That's why, that's why we respect him and, him and Nick. Exactly. We respect the only thing about Nick. You need to sit your head down so what Nick Diaz. You too damn old. I know you might be in money problem. You fucking old. You look in your fights. You putting up no defense. You're moving slow. Sit your head down so what uh, Nick Diaz. Sit your ass down. They gotta have a nice CBS commentator sport coming job coming up, right? Like, yeah, something. Yeah, and the other thing I say this real quick about this MMA, you know they say Jones is one Espinal. You know Espinal is the the interim heavyweight champion. John Jones is the heavyweight champion. John Jones, this is his first fight in fucking three or four years. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And he's holding up the belt, the, the elevating Espinal to the you know champion and whatever. He won't. He don't want to fight Espinal. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you know I see it both ways. I see it like like he said, he don't have nothing. All he's going to do is lose. Like, if he lose, it's going to diminish his legacy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's not like he can get more credit for beating Espinosa. If he beat Espinosa, oh, you're supposed to do it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you cannot enhance your legacy from beating Espinosa. But he has to, but he's going to have to fight him to prove his legacy. Yeah, that's because true. Because if he avoids Espinosa and never fights them, then, of course... The, that's going to be the asterisk. They're going to say, well, he never fought the guy that probably could have beat him or possibly could have beat him, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, he's... I tell you, him, I, I try to, not to judge a person from their personal right. life and, 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 you know, when they sports or whatever. Like Barry Bonds. I tell people this. Barry Bonds had a Hall of Fame career before he was proven to be on steroids. When he played with Pittsburgh, yeah. Pirates, and he was skinny and he wasn't big and had that big-ass head and all this other dumb shit your body do when you're on these steroids... He already had a Hall of Fame career, in my opinion, before even these damn steroid allegations even came to light, is what I'm saying. True, true. But my issue is, you know, I think Barry Bonds is still a Hall of Famer first bout, obviously, for the Major League, even yeah. despite the, uh, the steroids. But I do think the fact that the steroids were present... It does affect me in a way that I don't necessarily respect his yeah. the same way yeah. I respect Hank Aaron's. Yeah, no, you know I don't I mean? respect you. Fuck I mean, no. you know, to me, Hank Aaron's the home run king, and that's how it is. But uh, you know, yeah. but yeah. you know, we're here now. But I mean, look, Barry, Barry Bonds is obviously you know in his own right. But I hope John Jones gets his uh gets his stuff figured out, and I hope we can clarify, and hopefully it can be uh, undiminished. Yeah, an uh, undisputed here. heavyweight champion. Undisputed. Undisputed. Okay, now we we gonna move on. We're going to talk about this college football um, college football playoff. I'm going to tell y'all guys now, he's a, a Tennessee Volunteer fan. And, you know, I want to see what you what you got to say about this game Saturday with Georgia. We're actually going to rename this segment um, College Football Playoff Committee Hates Tennessee. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, this has been a complete conspiracy <laughs> the entire time. You know, we can go completely, completely – Beating Alabama, shutting out other teams. You know, we have two losses. We had one one loss to Arkansas, yeah. one we should have kept together on that, and one loss to Georgia, who is considered one of, if not the best team in the country, despite having two losses themselves. Yeah. And everyone just like, ah, oh, yeah. get Tennessee out of here. Ah, oh, trash them. Get them gone. I've got one of the best defenses in the country. Did yeah. they perform the way they should have Saturday against no. Georgia? No. no, hell no Georgia I outmatched them. Damn sure I've heard now, listen, on, on all my ball talk forums, they blowing up about bad calls. Now, I'm not one to try to throw out a bunch of that now. But uh, yeah, it, they, they got outplayed. You know, yeah. just, I think just at the end of the day, Georgia at the end unified a little better. Yeah. I think they executed a little better at certain points, 
and um, they just were able to move the ball and control the football and protect the football. Well, I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you what it is. In my opinion, I, you know, y'all got a lot of talent, but your quarterback, you know, he he's not a freshman now. I guess he's a redshirt freshman or a redshirt yeah, sophomore. He, yeah, he's a sophomore. Yeah, now. this is his first year really leading, leading the team. The team. team. Yes. Absolutely. So this is a development year. Yes. Yeah, so uh, next year, be worried. He, he's next he's, year, shaking your boots. <laughs> He's up and down, and another thing, the coaching staff don't trust him to take these kind of shots down the field. Like it's, it's like a, a safe game plan. Like we just plan not to lose. You know what I'm saying? And you you've got to have a game plan where you're gonna take shots down this field, where you're gonna try to be aggressive. Well, these defensive backs can come up here and jam you, and you they know we ain't gonna throw it five or ten yards. We can just jam them, yeah. and then we got three seconds in the pocket. He got to get rid of the fucking football. Yeah. You got to have a game plan where you let this quarterback. Take shots down this down the field and have a threat over the top. You get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying, dog. I mean, look for for Nico uh, Yamaliava. He just has to get more confident in his deep ball. Yeah, early in the yeah, season, yeah, yeah. Early in the season, he had some issues with accuracy on the deep ball. He uh, put the ball in uh, questionable yeah. safety a few times. Yeah. And uh, I think the coaching staff kind of adjusted the game plan to fit his needs and not necessarily push him in that way. But as we develop this deep ball, as we get ready for next year, deep ball is going to come out. And yeah. I'll tell you what, we're going to have a whole different game next year. I'm I wouldn't be but I don't think we're out of the playoffs. Yet. I'm just going to say, I wouldn't be surprised if y'all go on a little run. You know what I'm saying? If y'all get on, a, get on a little stretch where y'all win some games at the end of the season with – the team sometimes it takes a team a while to come together completely. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's like like okay, we'll talk about this real quick. We'll talk about Colorado. Okay, Colorado is what eight and two now. You know they won. They beat Utah. Yes, they did. Okay, the thing about it is, and I said this last year, every game last year Colorado was in the game. They were then were then once except for two of those games. Now two of those games like oh, okay, Oregon beat the shit out of them. Okay, yeah, they did. Yeah. and Washington State. I, I thought it was Washington State. Yeah. Beat them like 56 to fucking 14. But that was like a game where they just gave up. Like, you know how you just give up? The season's finna be over with. We done mailed it in. Yeah. But basically, they could have easily have won seven or eight games last year. You know what they, I'm saying? They, it, was, it was within reach. Yeah. Yes, yes. You know, like, easily. Yeah. You know, they was up fucking 24 points on damn Stanford. 24 to, 24 to something at halftime and lost in the overtime. Mm -hmm. But the point is, now that you, you come here next year, you laid the foundation, Dion. You've gotten rid of people talk shit, you know, Dion lost all these players. Okay, look at your record now when you losing these players and look at your damn record when you had these damn players. You down one one in ten or one in eleven. And two years later, you fucking eight and two. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes it's a it's addition by subtraction. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You have to lose these negative personalities, these these people that's not with what y'all trying to be on and to get a team better. I mean, what you think about it? Well, I think Coach Prime, when he left Jackson State, and man, I just want to yeah. say thank you, Coach Prime, for coming to Jackson State, yeah. helping that thank program you. out. Yeah, I'm you sure put a you. huge spotlight on HBCU football, yep. but also uh, a Mississippi college that puts out tons of uh, tons of graduates every year. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you, Coach Prime, for co coming yep. to our state. Yeah. Uh, but man, I tell you, it takes time to set a program up. Yeah. And people that thought, you know, just because Coach Prime was coming to hear coaching, coaching like Coach Prime, yeah. that that meant that it was going to translate to all wins and no losses. And that's just not how football Damn works. So right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think uh, you know he had to start setting foundation. People that were just chasing money, he made it very clear. Like, listen, uh, you're going to eventually get paid, but I'm not going to be the one paying you. You're going to have to figure this yeah. out. Like, we're going to play ball. And I think, you know, like you said, addition by subtraction. Yeah. The, the right the right personalities came in. The yeah. wrong personalities got the hell out Not of town. Yeah. And so now he's got a program all focused in on his culture. Yeah. On what he can do. Now he's bringing in the the, the voice. He's getting he better wants. recruits too this year. I ain't yes, he is. He is. He's getting Go better, better catable recruits than last. Last year it was just like everybody wanted to come. This year he's getting specific recruits for the needs that he needs to fit his team. To supplant, you know what I'm saying? To supplement his need instead of just getting all these speed corners and all you got these corners, the number two ranked corner, he got burned his ass off last year, uh, whatever the Kormati, whatever the name was, and they dismissed him from the team. And now you got players that's coming here that's playing hard. You get what I'm saying? They got a better scheme. I ain't gonna lie to you. The, the defensive scheme was a lot better than that shit I seen last year. Oh, you know no, what I'm saying? Uh, well, that's what happened. He realized that his defense wasn't holding up in the second half. Yeah. Other teams were coming back and getting points on him. He was like, then, you shut that down. Another thing is this, they wouldn't fucking tackle him. You know no. what I'm saying? I'm, I'm I'm tired of people hit stick trying to like on Madden. You trying to do a hit stick on a motherfucker. You're not wrapping up. You're not holding these players. They busting free. That's I try to tell people the same thing. 
just like with New England. New England and Kansas City is, is two reasons why they win almost all the percentage of their game. Where they used to, New England, we ain't gonna talk about you no more. The main reason was this: Tom Brady was taking a pay cut to make the team better. You know yeah. what? Yeah. I'll take twenty six a million dollar less for you to keep uh, Mike Brabel on defense. For you to keep Ty Law an extra year. For you to keep whoever James Harrison an extra year. For you to go out and get Corey Dillon. I'll take twenty six million dollar less. I don't need this money. I'd rather have a better team on my field. Just like Mahomes. Mahomes took less money for them to keep that corner. You know, yeah. What's it? Uh, they wouldn't sneeze, sneeze left. It was the other one. But they, he took like less money for them to keep him a, a decent enough defense. Well, he ain't got to go out there and throw 300. How they winning right now? He's not throwing 300. He's just doing just enough. He's just dink passing. Yeah, he just, yeah, that's all the hell he got to do. Man, I'll tell you, and you know, you are speaking so much truth regarding, uh, like you said, like the way that they're playing and the way the system's in place. Like the arm tackling. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, arm tackling's out. Ah, yeah. It's out. Wrap, wrap these people up, man. You know yeah, what Kansas, I'm saying? Kansas City, the thing about Kansas City is they are they have the best coach in football. Yeah. Uh, Andy Reid yeah. is somebody who is so well founded in tradition, but also so open minded that he's open to doing new things. The yeah. first play of the damn game, or the first play I saw of the Kansas City offense, uh, Mahomes hikes the ball. And they have a couple people all in motion to where basically Mahomes puts the ball out and then fake hands off yeah, yeah. three times in a row, spinning in a circle, and then hands it to the fastest guy on the field. Yeah. And he gets not eight or nine yards on the first run. And this is because they caused so much confusion by three fake handoffs in a row. The whole defense was stunned just for a second, hesitant to move to figure out which way we're going that they were able to make it work. And, yeah. like, no other coach would try that bullshit. Yeah. You know, most coaches would just be like, dude, he's going to get sacked and he's going to ruin the whole play, yada, yada. Andy B's like, no, nah, I've got enough faith in my offensive line. We've got enough invested in them. We can get this done. Well, the main thing, and I'll sum it up for you, the main thing is with Kansas City, you cannot just focus on one particular person. That's the beauty of the offense. Like, you can't just say I'm going to focus on Kelsey. Kelsey just doing, you know, he's up and down, okay? Yeah. You don't have a start running back, Vachel. I think he's back now, but he, back. yeah. So you you can't just say I'm gonna take Vachel out the game and it's gonna stop. I'm gonna take Kelsey out the game. I'm gonna take Mahomes gonna throw that ball to whoever is open. You never know who's gonna have a big game. You lost your best receiver. He still the fucking leading receiver. He been out since week three. All uh, Rice. You know he out for the year, but he's still the fucking leading receiver on the team. So. You got to do what it's, it takes to win. You got to tell people that people, these receivers are worried about these stats and shit. Like Antonio Brown, you get mad at people because they're not throwing you the ball because you want to get contract money or whatever. You're not thinking about, I don't give a fuck if I get one kick as long as my team winning the game. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's the mentality that you have to have. The, the egos have to be out the window. Well, it's you like, it's, like uh, it's like Lamar tweeted back at a fan who said, Lamar, I need this many fantasy points this weekend. Yeah. Lamar tweeted him back and said, fuck your fantasy team. I'm trying to win. Yeah. And, that, that's what you, I that's mean, what you listen, do. that's the attitude I want from a quarterback for my team in the NFL. You yeah. know, like, I mean, stat line's one thing, but, like, I'm, we're trying to win games. And look, when I say this, you just reminded me of something I wanted to say. You know, with Zach Wilson, when he was with, you know, I think with the Broncos now, he was with the Jets, and we talked about this a fucking year ago. You get there, you lost the game. You lost like fucking three to zero or whatever the fuck it was to New England. New England they ran the punt back and they ended up winning the game. Yeah. The offense only scored three fucking points. Okay, the whole game. And they, they said, Zach Wilson, do you feel like you let the team down? No, no. You know what I'm saying? You, it's your job as a quarterback. If, even if you don't score point, is to move that ball down the field, and get us in, in scoring position. You see what I'm saying? You can pay fucking thirty, forty million dollars to get my team. More than not into a scoring position and not fuck up the game. So yes, you are responsible. You know, I'm a quarterback. I feel like this. If I can't get you at least one damn touchdown in this game, I haven't done my job. You know, that that's me. But people don't feel like they don't care anymore. Well, I've got fucking paid, so you know, fuck what happened with the team. That, that's the mentality. Like, I, I look, I, I'm not a Brett uh, Aaron Rodgers basher, but I tell people that about Aaron Rodgers, he's selfish. You know what I'm saying? He, well, he's selfish in the way that. He's going to look out for him first. You get what I'm saying? He knows all of you in Green Bay, I give him credit. You didn't, you didn't get a star receiver in there. You made, he made Devontae Adams what he was. So they never got like a star receiver. Like, you know, New England, when they got Randy Moss and all this shit. They didn't go out their way to get him the weapons that he needed. They got a lot of retreads. Yeah. People that play with other teams and come there and the tread on the tires fucking like Mercedes Lewis. The damn tread is gone on your fucking tires. 
So I can't understand the fact that you would take the most money for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because they're not really trying to help you. But then again, I'm like, okay, Aaron Rodgers, take a little bit less money to, to keep some of these pieces with your team. You see what I'm saying? Right, right, right. You can make this money back on fucking endorsements. You fucking come on the Pat McAfee show all the goddamn time, man. Right, I see you all the time. Yeah. I know, I know you're getting compensated. Man, I tell you, I think, I think you hit the nail on the head earlier talking about Brady. I think, you know, I was a Peyton Manning fan. I still am Peyton Manning. I love Peyton Manning. Yeah. Love the Manning family. Hold, hold nine yards. Hold ten yards. But you know, at some point, you have to say, you know, something makes Tom Brady the go and. Beyond the Super Bowl rings, beyond, yeah. beyond the winning percentage, you know. Yeah. Because um, it's certainly not his completion percentage. It's Damn not sure high. Ain't. It's Damn not sure high. Damn sure ain't. But, but, I saw that. Yeah, but, I was a little surprised. But yeah. Brady, willing to take a pay cut to keep the team better, to keep the team more yeah. balanced, I think is, a, is you know, what it is. It's a selfless act. Yeah. And it yeah. kept putting his team in a position it, it, yeah. to win where yeah. other teams were like, Hey, I'm restructuring my deal. Yeah. yeah, this, 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 and like, you know, I can't keep him. You know, I think like Alvin Kamara. You know, he just recently signed his probably final deal with New Orleans. Yeah, I saw it. And uh, proud of my guy staying in New Orleans, and I love Alvin Kamara yeah. since he was with Tennessee. Yeah, obviously came out of New Orleans, relit my fire for the New Orleans Saints. Yeah. So, uh, man, so I'm why, need a lot why, of goddamn fun. why wasn't he a captain until Darren Rizzi? That's what. I, that's what I want to know. You know, I, this is no hate to Dennis Allen and Dennis, the Dennis Allen family. He, he like one of the I'm so glad he too. is. I'm so glad he is uh, let go from the division. I, yeah, no, you got, no, we were gonna talk about that earlier. You know what I mean? You, we kind of hit on it. I try to tell people this about the Saints. I say, hey, they want their coach gone. When they, I told these people, Carolina. I said they're gonna lose to Carolina. I said, you know why? Because I, I played football. I didn't go to the NFL. None of this shit. But I've, I've been on football team. I've been on the basketball team. I've been on the track team. When you want, if you're not supporting that coach, you you're want, you, you, yeah, you want him out of there. You're gonna half ass, half ass effort. You're not gonna execute. You're gonna, you know, whatever. You're, you're not go. running through brick yeah. walls. Yeah, yeah, like you are for some of these coaches out here. Like yeah. Dan uh, Quinn, Dan yeah. Campbell, some of these guys that are just getting you fired up. And man, yeah. Rizzy, man, have you watched any interview with with Darren Rizzy? Yeah, that guy's a football guy. Damn sure, yeah. That guy, man, I want to, I want him to wake me up every morning out of my bed, and shake me, said. Get the fuck out of bed. You got work to do. I'm telling you, man. I'm a yeah. big fan of Darren Rizzi, man. I'm so happy to see he made Alvin Kamara a uh, he made Alvin Kamara a captain yeah. his first week. Yeah. And then he said, Hey, I walked in the locker room, I noticed all the teams all separated. Yeah. And I sitting together. You know you hear about this? Yeah, I heard about it. He said, yeah. No, no, we're gonna put the offensive line together. Y'all are a unit. We're gonna put the receivers together, y'all are a unit. And we're gonna put the quarterbacks together, y'all are a unit. That's how you coach a football team, man. And, That's and, culture right and there. And then and you know, look at oh, our, our Valkyrie Scanlon or whatever. You know, he doesn't got a fire. I'm like, where the hell you come from? Oh, Valkyrie Scanlon or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah Marquez uh, yeah. Valdez Scanlon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he, he doesn't come out of nowhere. Derek Carr, him, they got a good connection or whatever. Yeah, you know, he has a good connection with those bigger receivers. I try to tell people that we don't have a big receiver anymore because we got lost Thomas or whatever. So we we needed somebody with a little height on him, a little bigger body receiver. Yeah. Instead of having all this speed, whatever, you got to balance this shit out. You know what I'm saying? Dude, and I'm telling you, man, MVS, I, when I heard that we traded for him, I thought to myself, like, guy really hasn't yeah. been the guy. Except you know, for the playoffs. Now, when the playoffs, when Kansas City, when the playoffs come, every that's receiver, true. That's true. every time they playoffs come. He showed up. Come, he showed up. Yeah, and, and the rest of them, the, the whole regular season, you like, what the fuck you? When the playoffs come, Hollywood brought everybody come to life. I'm like, damn. But isn't it kind of like New Orleans to go get somebody that we know is a possible wash. Yeah. That you know, like think about Drew Brees. Yeah. Drew Brees just had shoulder surgery and all that. Couldn't pick up a football. Yeah. And Sean Payton said, "Ah, this is my guy." Or Mickey Loomis, whoever it was that made the final decision, said, "I think this is the guy right here." Yeah. You know, going out and getting MBS and him immediately becoming a weapon. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you saw today. He got a seventy-one yard touchdown that. run. Yeah. Where he. I mean, the effort yards after carry is yeah. beyond what I've seen from him before. Yeah. It's beyond what I've seen most wide receivers in the NFL. Like, he's pushing boundaries. I can tell he's taking agility lessons from AK. Because, yeah. man, I tell you, AK, Baldy did the best. He said AK is like watching smoke through a hole. That guy just moves places. And I'm going to tell you something else about the, about the Saints. They have a lot of fan support. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you come to New Orleans – you get a lot of support from the fans, and that means something to the players. Like it does. they embrace you immediately. And when you do something good, the fans, you know, whatever. So when you get this love from the from the fans and shit, it gives you more motivation to go out there and, and make these kind of plays. You know what I'm saying? 
So you need that support. You go to these stadiums and they support. You know what I'm saying? Oakland, we hey, we don't talk about the Oakland Raiders. We, we gonna leave them alone. I don't know what the hell going on in the black hole or whatever the hell you want to do. What not Oakland, Las Vegas Raiders? I was gonna say there ain't no Raiders in Oakland. Yeah, yeah. When well, ain't no Raiders in Las Vegas, don't look like it. We gonna leave that alone. But <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the hell going on with you, Las Vegas Raiders. I, I, I just one thing is you ain't got no damn quarterback. You know what I'm saying? Well, Brock Bowers went off today. Hey, Brock Bowers out. He had a great season. Brock Bowers have been producing the whole season. He the best weapon that they have on their team. But he needs a quarterback, you know, that's gonna get him the ball. If he had a good, a, a better quarterback, he could really just his potential could be reached. You get what I'm saying? Well, I don't want to be uh, inauthentic, man. I haven't been able to catch one Raiders game live this year. So oh, I, I've been watching highlights I, I, also. I, I, I haven't been able who, to... who who watching? The only person watching me damn thing. But every time you turn, they say, "What the hell?" Nobody want to see that shit on the damn field. But oh, uh, we we gonna move on because I want to hit this before you know. I know my co-host he got shit he got to do here. Um, we're gonna talk about Caitlin Clark, okay? Uh, I try to tell people this. I don't like when people put this this race thing into an athlete. You know, she's a white girl. I don't give a damn if she was a pink girl, a blue girl. She has talent, okay? Caitlin Clark, I've always been like whatever, but she made a believe out of me. She got talent. She's a, she's a good, you know, she she's a good player. She she shares the ball, but people want to talk shit. She they talk about Andrew Reese stat pad. Hey, Caitlin Clark stat pad. It, all of them stat pad. I don't know why people act like everybody on stat pad. Everybody knows what they need to do to get these stats. You get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. And so, what's the big deal about her stat pad? It's not. It's not a big deal. I mean, everybody fucking do. It. You, you know, see what I'm saying? The problem is, um, right now, I think is jealousy. Yeah, and I hate to say yeah. it like that. It is. You know, because uh, Caitlin Clark got so much more attention than any yeah. other college basketball, a women's college basketball player probably of all time. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't necessarily think that she's the greatest of all time. I no, know, so you got to prove it, man. Some people will You're tell me You're a fucking rookie. Yeah. She, and she got, no, I'm talking about in college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know yeah. she's got the records now. But, you know, I think you one-on-one -on -one some people, I don't necessarily think she comes out on top. However, I think, you know, we got to realize that this Angel Reese versus Caitlin Clark debacle yeah, or this this that's damn sure what it is. It, it it's good for basketball. Yeah, it draws an eye on the game. Exactly. I've never saying. look. Listen, what I don't understand is how did the WNBA go bankrupt the one the, yeah. the busiest season they ever had? Hold I'm, on, you finally had you finally had people buying tickets, and now all of a sudden you yeah. have the money. I think y'all all took the money that you have got this year and said, "Oh, it's out. We're yeah. done here." Now, they got to fix the WNBA, man. I, I'm gonna tell you something. And you said the main thing is drawing eyes at the game. I barely, I've watched three or four games. This year, I've watched like 12 of them. You see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, exactly. I want to see what Caitlin's going to do. I want to see what Angel's going to do. I do. I, I want to see who's going to win the, the title. I've seen all this. You know, we just, okay, I'm glad the Liberty, I say that, I'm glad New York won the title finally. I didn't want you to be the fucking Buffalo Bills and go to four straight Super Bowls and fucking not have a title. Buffalo still ain't got a Super Bowl title. I didn't want to see y'all be Buffalo Bills. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You've been in three finals and you, 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 you finally got one. Thank God. You finally got your finals. So congratulations, Liberty. I'm glad y'all won. You know, y'all, y'all, y'all deserve it. Okay. Now we back to this, like you said, Angel Reese. People hanging on her, getting rebound. Okay, like she said, if it was that damn easy, everybody would do it. If it like just like with, people talk shit about women. They would kill me with this. I won't say this. Women is seven foot. Well, he's seven foot. How many other damn seven footers that you see doing what the hell he doing? Very few. You get what I'm saying? Very few. Very few. He fucking was seven three, or whatever he is. Yeah. I've seen uh, Wembley. Oh, Wembley. Yeah. I think he's seven three or whatever. I've seen plenty of people seven three, seven six, Maris, all these people that they ain't fucking do it. The way he can handle that ball, the way he can shoot that three point, the the intensity. I try to say I'm a basketball player. I know a basketball player when I see them. Yeah. He got that fire. He got that intensity. Mm -hmm. He he wants this. You can have talent, but you gotta want the shit. You know what I'm saying? He wants to be better. And people talk shit. He only got six rebounds. Okay, it's all it's kinda hard to get fucking rebounds when you're shooting fucking three pointers most of the time. You get what I'm saying? If he's not under the goal. Right, right. You right. see what I'm saying? These three pointers have long rebounds. People don't know basketball game. Like you gotta stuck know the game. When you shooting threes, it's long rebound. Yes. So most of the rebound going to these guards because they're hitting off the rim somewhere and these guards taking in transition exactly. and running with the ball. So, of course, he didn't give a five or six damn rebound. He don't even play inside like that. Well, most people don't also don't understand, you know, when playing basketball, rebounding is a lot of physics. 
we, after you shoot the ball, yeah. you're having to assess, is this going in? Yep. Or at what point is this missing? And where is the ball going to bounce from yeah. that? What angle? So, like, yeah. having, having to plan that out. You know, it's it's difficult. It's a fast paced thing. So rebounding is a lot harder than people think. Yeah, and, it, is. Uh, it is. I think uh, I think rebounding is one of the greatest stat lines in uh, in the game because man, uh, I think it showcases how incredible people like uh, Dennis Rodman yeah. are. Because man, it's a science, man. Rebound, and it's a science. Yeah, man. it is straight science. It's hard to just go in there and just get the rebound. It's a lot of efforts. People don't realize that you take. It's a lot of energy that you're putting out. To go up here and get the rebound. Yeah. It's wearing down your fatigue. People, Andy Reese can't shoot. And you be wore the fuck down too. If you're getting 14 rebounds a fucking game, mm-hmm. of course it's gonna affect your damn shot. Of course your shot gonna be flat sometime. You get what I'm saying? Yep. She doing what she need to do. The thing about it is too, I'll say this now. People, Andrew Reese, Caitlin Clark. Okay. Yeah, let's get back to that. Let's K- get back to K- that. Caitlin Clark got fucking two all stars at least on her fucking team. Yep. She got Boston. And Kelsey Mitchell is a fucking great. I don't care what nobody said. Kelsey Mitchell is a great player. Yes. So you got Kelsey Mitchell. You got all of these or former number one picks that people don't talk about that either. Indiana got three number one picks. Okay. In the last fucking four years, you got three number one picks. Players. Okay. You supposed to have a decent team. Okay. Who the hell Chicago got? Chicago. Okay. You got Car. Car. What's the name? Uh, Cardosa or whatever. But Cardosa. Don't, don't get me lying right now, man. Yeah. What I'm saying is this. You don't have another star beside Angel Reese that a player that can just create and score consistently 20 points a damn game on your fucking team. Right. So, of course, you got to get the Ali rebound. You know, she don't have a great player beside her. To You know what I mean? Once she gets somebody there, they say that she might get, they might get the, guy, the girl from UConn next year. Chicago, uh, aiming for her. Mm-hmm. You get you a consistent, good player and let Reese play her role. Then you can talk about compare. You can't compare her in different positions. I don't like people do that shit. Yeah. Don't go compare different player positions. Well, Caden Clark scored this many points. Caden Clark's the fucking point guard. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> Andrew Reese is a fucking center or a power forward or whatever the hell she right, is. Right, 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 right. So you cannot compare what she's doing to what Caden Clark doing. Why we can't just give both of them credit? Both of them good players. I see a lot of good things in the future for both of them. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, why do people, Caitlin Clark, and the bad part about it, these people are friends. Andrew Reese said it, me and Caitlin Clark get along great. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Just because you competitive, you talk a little shit on the court, don't mean I don't like you. Well, you get what I'm saying? Exactly. Well, people got to understand uh, the competitiveness of basketball, you know, like like any sport, but, but sure enough, basketball, like, it is one of the most fun games to smack talk. Yeah, yeah, it because, is. Because you can't really, really hit each other. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You have, you have a certain level of discipline that you yeah. can play around and keep your composure while, while getting under the skin of your opponent and your competitors. So I think uh, I think the Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, uh, uh, yeah. what, what would you call that duet, the, the yeah. dance, the yeah. dance that they got going on, uh, the rivalry, baby. I think that's beautiful for women's basketball, and I can't wait to uh, continue watching uh, more WNBA yeah, and hopefully yeah. get back to more of that, man, because because well, I, I, I'd love to see more and more people get really enthralled and, like, continue to push the sport. I think, you know, I hear they, finna, they got two expansion teams that they finna open up. They got two new teams that's going to come to the W. I don't know if it's this next season, but the season after. Like Which tw- city? 2026. 20, I think one of them was Sacramento – and it, you know somewhere else, but but not New Orleans. No, nah, and they were New Orleans. I know that. I don't know if it was Sacramento or somewhere else, but they got. Ex- they, somebody said they might get one in Seattle. You know they're trying to get a means and a win. They're trying to bring the means back team too. Well, the I Sonics think the whatever. Supersonics need to come back. Yeah, I agree. They restore their history. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's that's the thing about it. Get them the history that they had and stuff. I don't like when teams do that either. You move his team to a new city and you get them the old history. No. Give them the history of the, of, yeah. the, of the history that they had in that fucking exactly. city. Exactly, like you know, like like it, it wouldn't make any sense to have Sean Kemp in an Oklahoma City Thunder, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, Ring of Fire. It's like I mean, the hello, it's Sean Kemp, it's yeah. the Rain Man, Gary Payton. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the glove, that's not that's not OKC. Yeah, now, there are nothing against OKC, but it's just not the same. It's kind of like the whole debacle of uh, who gets to wear the Houston Oilers uh, uniforms. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, Houston Texans or the Tennessee, Tennessee Titans. Titan. Yeah, yeah. It's like, technically, it's a Titans deal, but Houston. You could have kept them. You didn't. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know who's fair. I want to see them on the field, though. I want someone to have them. That's like Cleveland and Baltimore. You know oh, what I'm God. saying? That, that's, a, that, that, that's a three-way debacle yeah, right there. Yeah, so we're going to leave that alone. <laughs> All right, now we're going to touch on this one subject. You said something about Shannon Short. You know, when him and Ch- Ocho Cinco was talking about how he traveled with the 
Man, I just, Airlines or whatever. I just thought it was hilarious that uh, Shannon Sharp kept calling Southwest Airlines uh, discount airlines. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'll take it though. What? I'm listen, I must be. You, you, I'm a I want to go five right now. Listen, listen. Let me tell you something. About discount is frontier yeah, is spirit. Sure, yeah. Okay, Southwest. That is like. That's like a Bugatti compared to what I'm yeah, flying. Okay, yeah. let me just tell you, I can't afford to fly. I don't even know the name of this motherfucker. I, got I just loved seeing Ocho Cinco get on to him and say, man, you make it a sound bad, man. He said, it's the same plane. They fly in the same planes, man. It's, it's it don't nothing, matter. It's nothing, I try to tell people, it's nothing wrong, even if you're rich, to, to, to save your money. You ain't got to flunk, you know, I'm rich, I'm going to take this, I need a Bugatti. Man, fuck that. Get your damn Cadillac or some shit. You know what I'm saying? You don't need no fucking Bugatti. It costs a hundred thousand dollars. Get a Cadillac that costs twenty thousand dollars. You found a Bugatti for a hundred thousand dollars? Well, you know, I'm just, it, you know, it's just literal. <laughs> but people, you you, you gotta see. That's why Chad. I said he's like, I still got money. You know what I'm saying? From when I played, I still have money. Well, he owns like twenty three McDonald's. That's what I'm saying. Get this money and, and translate it into some shit that's gonna be what up. That's why we athletes. I hate to say this. I'm gonna leave this alone. The athlete too busy chasing chasing women, fucking off in the club. Not investing your money, and then and next thing I know, you hurt. All of a sudden, you hurt. All the time I turn around, Ben Simmons, you hurt. Ben Simmons had a he had twelve assists. The next goddamn game, your back hurting again. Or the next game, you out. And then you look on Instagram, you got a new model every damn month. You see what I'm saying? You and Zion, all y'all worried about your Instagram model. Zion, all this talent you got, but you too worried about you jumping in the bed, bed to bed with all these women, and then you missing out. You you cheating the fans, Zion. You ain't played a full season yet, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. You yeah, ain't played Zion, a, you, Zion you, needs to learn how to stay healthy. That's, you, you, it, it, that's the thing. You too busy uh, in the bedroom. That's why you can't stay healthy. You're not you're resting your body. When, you, when, you, when your game play, go and go to sleep and lay down and rest your body. Get in the chamber. Get in the water. You know what I'm saying? Let your body, your muscle regenerate. And you won't be sore. Instead, you over trying to jump to Instagram. And one girl pregnant, another girl pregnant. This, what's wrong with you, athlete? That's what I want to know. You know they want your they, damn money. They're not paying attention to Marshawn Lynch. Marshawn Lynch came to the league and said, why the hell is everybody spending this money? Yeah. And he literally has a financial literacy program for professional athletes to learn how to not blow their money. Because did you know it was like over like 60, maybe even 70% of professional athletes end up broke? Bro, yeah, started? yeah. Look at Mike Tyson. Why the hell you got to fight when you're 60 years old, Mike Tyson? You've been a fucking multiple times. You're the youngest heavyweight champion in, in history. Okay, I think Tyson's got the wrong agents. Yeah, no, because, you know because what? he could have I'm, the right endorsements I'm, right look, now. He could, have the, he could have the best endorsements right now. People I'm, would pay that. I'm glad you said that because me and my homeboy were talking about this. Don King fucked him over. Don oh, King, Don King was robbing him blind, taking all his well, money. Well, another story of Don King. Yeah, Don yeah, King? yeah. Fuck him. Speaking of, we're clarifying not the Don King local DJ to Hasbro, but yeah, bring yeah. Don King the fight uh, organizing. <clears throat> yeah, that old bastard, the high hair. You know what I'm talking about. But yeah. He took all his man money. Ain't no way that you should be fighting at 60 fucking years old. Ain't, it's no fucking way. $20 million, okay, that's fine. You should have had $20 million already stocked up some damn I'm way. surprised it wasn't a lot more than $20 million. I thought it was like 45 or 50 The initial reports was Powell, $40 million, Tyson, $20 million. But see, they, depending on, they might do the pay-per-view draw or the net figure, whatever the fuck you want to say. It might, it might, it might accelerate up twenty. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's multipliers to this. People don't realize that it's multipliers to these terms. You have, you have the initial terms, and you have multipliers, just like with a receiver. You know what? Initially, we give you three million dollars. But if you get seventy five catches, we'll add another two million to that. And if you get ten touchdowns, you know, if you make an all pro, it's stuff that can multiply your contract and make it worth a lot more than what it is. Yeah. The fight, like we said, we already talked about it. Netflix, you fucking up. You all this buffering and shit. I'm over here like, what the hell? Mike Tyson in the rain. That day I know he walked to the rain. That day I know he's swinging. Like, this, what the hell? This was the test to see how much bandwidth they could handle before the new before the NFL games this fall. Yeah, because they're doing them, the Christmas Day games. They're all gonna be on uh, Netflix. Yeah, and the other thing I'm gonna tell you is now. You said you didn't know about this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit on this real quick. You know, Shannon Sharp had a tape. It was audio that was released of him supposedly. Allegedly having sex with a woman or whatever. And he didn't he said that he went live, he didn't know how to phone. But you know yourself that to go live you have to click on this shit. Your phone don't just go into a fucking live mode. You get what I'm saying? Especially whatever he went on or with Instagram or whatever the fuck it was. You have to click into this to go into this live mode. You get what I'm saying? You can't just drop your phone and go into that mode. 
So, he was on here allegedly having sex with some woman. You know, whatever. We don't fucking know. We, you, you didn't hear very much from her. You just heard him. You know, I tell somebody, I hate to say this. You see, whatever. I should not hear the man more than the damn woman on sex video, though. I shouldn't hear all of you. Oh, let me know. Shit, this and all this shit. And I, I don't hear the damn woman at all, boy. All I hear is yo, oh, shit, it's some shit. You know what I'm saying? And you kept saying her name like you was doing it on purpose to let people know that. Was that the Michelle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I yes. was so confused. Yes. I think I, I was yes. the only person in the world that was missing out on that. Yeah. And I had no idea what they were talking about. He, he talking, oh, shit, oh, oh, and all this shit. You know what I'm saying? You barely hear him in there like a woman. You hear him talk. Oh, man. It seemed like it was a plant. I'm sorry. It seemed like they had them gay allegations. You know, you come out there with a damn purse. Uh, show up that time. And he, uh, whatever. You know, like, he trying to be high. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's what I try to tell people that. But the sex tape leak, you did that for publicity. To keep your name relevant. Every time your, 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 your popularity started dropping, you, all of a sudden, oh, Kim Kardashian, here's a sex tape. You and Ray J. All of a sudden, here's another damn sex tape. Paris Hilton. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. All of a sudden, sex come out of no goddamn war, though. And we ain't hear nothing about it. Oh, we heard all about That's it. That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I tell you what, hey, I appreciate you coming by. Uh, I Derek, think, I yeah. appreciate you having me, man. Hey, you, hey, two kings on the side. We keep it real here, baby. Hey, keep it real 100 always.